science teacher who was teaching evolution and creationist theories, the evidences for evolution and creation in the science classes. He got fired. He could not teach any evidence supporting creation because it was religious. Well, I want to tell you, evolution is religious. It is a religion, a very powerful religion. And notice the one thing they will not do is tolerate any opposition to it. Why won't the educational system tolerate different views? Are they afraid their view won't stand up? With the, if the student has two views, he could think. And if he thinks, he might make a choice. And it might not be their choice. That they cannot stand. Now, notice back in the 1920s, you had the big Scopes trial. Remember down in Tennessee? Uh, the science teacher who wanted to teach evolution along with uh, the creationist theory. And the courts ruled that he had a right to teach both. But the South Dakota courts ruled that a man doesn't have the right to teach both when it comes to questioning evolutionary theory. Now, do you know why it's a theory of evolution and not the law of evolution? Do you know why it's still a theory of evolution after all of these years? They have yet to find one fact to support it. There are no facts to support it. That's why it's a theory. If they had a fact, they would jump up and down and clap their feet. Now, let's talk about science for a few minutes. I'm not against science. You might think I am the way I'm going to be speaking, but I'm against a religion called scientism, which is quite different than science. Science is a field of study which deals entirely in facts. I want you to get my definition. Science is a field of study that deals entirely in facts. Now, next thing we have to know, watch something which I do that most people that you listen to do not do. Define my terms. If we don't have the same definition, we have two different ideas. Today, the average person cannot define a word hardly. They cannot tell you exactly what that word means and what it doesn't mean. Because that's what you have to do in order to be, have a word in your vocabulary. The average college student comes out of college today, he doesn't have a 200-word vocabulary. It used to be that he would come out with a 4,000 to 5,000 word vocabulary 50, 70 years ago. Do you know what I mean? They cannot define words they use all the time. They use them. But they don't have any precise meaning. And if the word doesn't have a precise meaning to both me and to you, and I use it, your idea may not be the same idea as my idea. You see? The purpose of language is to communicate precisely ideas. But if language becomes a general, it's really cool, it's really this. I listen to young people today. They can't describe a movie. They cannot describe a scene. They say, oh, it was just fantastic. It was just fabulous. Oh, it was just, oh, you should have been there. It was just, but they can't describe it. They do not have the language to describe what went on. They cannot start at the beginning and give you a...